In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We call upon God's mercy, God's love, and compassion. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the healer of our every ill. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you desire to lead us to the fullness of life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, grant that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth of Mamre, as Abraham sat at the entrance of his tent while the day was growing hot. And looking up, he saw three men standing nearby. And when he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them. And bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if I may ask you this favor, please do not go on past your servant, but let some water be brought, that you may bathe your feet, and then rest yourselves under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food, that you may refresh yourselves, and afterwards you may go on your way. And the men replied, very well, do as you have said. And so Abraham hastened into the tent and told Sarah, quick, three measures of fine flour, knead it and make rolls. And then he ran to the herd, picked out a tender, choice steer, and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk, as well as the steer that had been prepared, and set them before them. And he waited on them under the tree while they ate. And they asked him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he replied, there in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was listening at the entrance of the tent just behind him. Now, Sarah and Abraham were very advanced in years, and Sarah had stopped having her womanly periods. And so Sarah laughed to herself and said, Now that I am so withered and my husband is so old, am I still to have sexual pleasure? But the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I really bear a child as I am old? Is anything too marvelous for the Lord to do? At the appointed time, about this time, next year, I will return to you, and Sarah will have a son. Because she was afraid, Sarah dissembled, saying, I didn't laugh. But he replied, Yes, you did the word of the Lord. Amen. 
The Lord has remembered his mercy. The Lord has remembered his mercy. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. The Lord remembers his mercy, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. And from this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The Lord remembers his mercy. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. The Lord remembers his mercy. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. The Lord remembered his mercy. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus, when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into the outer darkness where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, You may go. As you have believed, let it be done for you. At that very hour, his servant was healed. Jesus entered the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand. The fever left her and she rose and waited on them. When it was evening, they brought him many who were possessed by demons, and he drove out the spirits by a word and cure, cured all the sick to fulfill what had been said by Isaiah the prophet. He took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. So today's readings bring together, make a connection 
between hospitality and healing. We have the story of Abraham seeing these people traveling by and he rushes out to meet them and insists that they come and share a meal. And this is no simple, give them a, a glass of water. It's fresh bread and, and, and meat and they sacrifice a steer. It's a big feast that he offers to these people, offering them hospitality. And in doing so, he's actually being hospitable to messengers of God. And in the process, Abraham and Sarah, who have been promised a future, but who are old and childless, are healed in a way because they're promised a child will come to them. Now, you can't blame Sarah for laughing. She's in her 90s. And when she hears them say, oh, well, Sarah will have a baby next year, I'm sure she's saying to herself, are you kidding me? I'm 90 years old. This is going to happen to me now. Um, but yet, it's a, it's a symbol of the fact that God can do the impossible. God can do the impossible. And so even for Abraham and Sarah, who are well into old age, God brings about the possibility of a child. They are hospitable and they are healed. You know, even the word hospitality and hospital are connected. They come from the same word. In fact, the earliest hospital in Europe is right down the street from St. Peter's Basilica. And it was created to be hospitable to the pilgrims who came to Rome who were sick. That's why they called it a hospital. It was a welcome to people who had made the long journey to Rome and now needed to be healed. We have in the gospel Jesus being approached by a centurion who has deep faith in just the word of Jesus. The word could cure his servant. Jesus didn't even have to come into his, into his house. And he uses those words that we use at every Eucharist. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. I remember when I was a kid and we said these words in mass, I used to think that that meant come under the roof of my mouth. But this centurion was just so filled with faith. He's basically saying just your word is enough to cure um, my servant. And he does. And he goes on to cure Peter's mother-in-law, who in turn offers hospitality to them. She gets up and she cooks supper. We pray those words at every Mass. Lord, I am not worthy for you to come into me, to come under my roof. But Jesus still does. Even though we're unworthy, Jesus still comes to us. And we're called to be hospitable to him, to welcome him into our hearts, into our lives, and in turn, be hospitable to others. And that could be in little ways. It doesn't mean we have to rush out and slaughter a cow to feed somebody a steak dinner, but just to be kind to somebody, to be nice to somebody in a store, to be kind to someone in traffic. Um, all of those acts are acts of hospitality, and they are acts that bring healing and wholeness. So at this Eucharist, let's welcome Jesus again into our hearts, into our bodies. Let's receive the Lord. And let's allow Jesus to help us to bring welcome and healing to others. So let's offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray for the church, we pray for one another, that we may always be welcoming, especially to the stranger, to those who are in great need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
This morning, there are two young men who are being ordained priests for the Archdiocese of Hartford. So we pray for them, for Father Joseph and McNeil, Father Matthew Collins. We pray that their ministry will be blessed, that they will have generous and listening hearts. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for Marie Zielinski, for Lisa, for all those we know who need God's healing touch. We pray for those who, who are still suffering from COVID. And we pray for all those who care for the sick each day. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are victims of tragedy. We pray for those who have died or were injured in the collapse of the building in Miami. We pray for their families, some of whom are anxiously awaiting news of their loved ones. That God may strengthen them in their hour of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, the Mass today is offered for Mary and Jeremiah Horgan, that they and all those who have gone before us may be welcomed into the joy of eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we carry in our hearts, let's pause for a moment in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, you have given us Jesus, your son, who reaches out to touch us with love and with healing. We ask you to look upon our needs and receive these prayers through Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and our lives may be acceptable to God the loving Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice for the hands, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all holy church. O Lord, look upon the prayers and offerings of your faithful presented in the commemoration of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God, that they may be pleasing to you and may confer on us your help and forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in a wonderful way you gave the Blessed Virgin Mary a special share in the mystery of pain. She now shines radiantly as a sign of health, of healing, and of divine hope for the sick who call on her patronage. 
To all who look up to her in prayer, she is the model of perfect acceptance of your will and of wholehearted conformity with Christ, who out of love for us endured our weakness and bore our sufferings. Through Christ, the angels of heaven offer their prayer of adoration as they rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices be one with theirs in their triumphant hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all together to everlasting life. For the reception of communion, please come up the center aisle. If you have a mask, please uh, put your mask on as you come up for communion. Um, and then if, if walking is a difficulty, just stay where you are. After the others have come up, just raise your hand and I'll bring communion to you in your place.
Let us pray. Lord our God, as we remember the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus, we have received with joyful hearts the healing sacrament of the body and blood of your only Son. May this sacrament bring us blessings in this life and in the world to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you for joining us in prayer. Where, where are you folks coming from? The Bronx. Yes. All right. Oh, welcome. Oh, welcome to you. <laughs> Bienvenidos. Very good. Very good. So the uh, cafe is opened after mass if you want something to eat, if you want some lunch. There's lots of good food there. Um, the gift shop is open. So um, enjoy the rest of your stay here. Um, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a nice day.